So we move on to our next session. And this name is Akash Patel of Elevate Inc. Uh, just a brief profile on Akash. He's the founder and president of Elevator Inc., a Florida-based strategic business consulting firm providing a variety of services based on recognizing, forming, and leveraging strategic relationships. Akash, uh, a young professional here, he's highly accomplished. He's got a bachelor's degree in English literature and political science from FSU. Recently, the FSI Alumni Association named Akash Patel to be the 30 under 30 list. He's been referred to in the Tampa Bay Tribune as Tampa's networking heavyweight and Tampa Bay Business Journal as Tampa's master networker. Here is Akash Patel. Thank you. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. First of all, I want to, I don't know if we've done this earlier, but can we give Quinella Jane a round of applause for putting this together? <laughs> This was a, this is great to be here with you guys today, and I'm kind of going to touch on what Tim just left off on about networking. It's really brief, really interactive, and uh, please, please uh, feel free to ask questions at any point in the presentation. Uh, before I want to get into it, I want to show everyone a video. Um, my presentation is called The Inconsistent World of Connections, um, but you're probably wondering what that is. So today's goal is I want you to gain confidence in your networking ability, because after some of you already started this morning, but after this presentation, there's going to be a lot of time for networking. I really want you guys to increase your willingness, as a couple of our speakers mentioned earlier, take risks and approach people that you don't know. Go up to them, find out how to get funding, find out how they can help your startup. I've already heard three or four people already ask people for business cards and, and setting up meetings to get together. Um, have a targeted approach, as I, a couple of speakers also mentioned earlier. Get, if you come here you know, with a group of friends, separate yourselves and target approach on, on what you want to accomplish for today. Um, and position yourself using social media, and I'll touch on, on that at the end. But there are some of you uh, who, who do look uh, to social media right now. I've been following some of your tweets. So for those of you who are on uh, Twitter, uh, it's not 15 minutes, it's 30 minutes. Um, for those of you who are on Twitter, the, uh, the hashtag I'm using is blah2013, and I'll go into what blah 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 is. So as, uh, as the speaker mentioned, as the, as the organizer mentioned, this is who I am. I've been in Tampa about seven years. I enjoy it. I have um, I found a great community of friends and business professionals like Mr. Sharp, who spoke earlier, who have mentored me through throughout uh, starting my business. I started my company a year and a half ago, so I was sitting in the audience, literally like you, two years ago. Um, but you guys are probably looking at my biography. You've heard a lot of speakers today. I can see we just had lunch, and you're all probably looking at this like this guy's just talking blah blah blah, right? Well, that's what I get every time I talk to students, and every time I talk to business professionals. I spoke at the annual meeting of. The Florida Institute of CPAs, I hope there's no CPAs in here, but that is the, that is, no, there I said one, sorry, no offense. But literally that's what you get, because when you come up here and you talk and you're like, what is this guy talking about? And I want you guys to understand that networking is how I got to where I am, it's, and it's really helped me, and I hope that tonight and later on in your life you really focus on networking with your business and your startup and your technology field. So blah, 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 since I got that reaction, I decided to make it acrostic. So today's agenda, we're gonna talk about networking, talking about the mishaps we feel when we, we network around the room, and how do you position yourself so you're finding the best people and making the best connections, and it's almost like that, and John Foster and I, where's John, we were just talking about that, almost like if you just left that door, that, that window open, you've got to grab it, because you're not going to get that again. So, um, so be proactive, leverage your network, add value, and have a plan to follow up. So we're going to go over these four things, again, not too long, and I apologize about the video. Um, be proactive in everything you're doing. So um, my first job out of college, I, um, I, worked in t I worked at the St. Petersburg Times office in Tallahassee, Florida. And everyone, how many of you have flown on a plane before? <laughs> everyone flies on planes. And you know, sometimes you go on a plane and you don't know who you're sitting next to. You, you may, might be a baby, might be crying, it might be a heavy set person, you just never know, right? But sometimes you start up a conversation. You never know where it's gonna take you. Well, I went to Florida State in Tallahassee. My mom lives in New Jersey. So I'm flying back and forth from Tallahassee to Philadelphia for Christmas holidays. And this is in my sophomore year of college. But I was involved in the student government there, so I decided to be proactive and go to the student government office and say, I want a business card. They're like, you're a student. You don't get business cards. You're here to go to school. So I went to Staples. I went to Staples and I got a business card. It cost $20 for 500 cards. And it said Akash Patel, class of 20, uh, 2006, BA in political science, 
and had my email address. And it was like an old email address. It was one of the first Yahoo email addresses I had. And I kept it with me, and I keep business cards everywhere I go. And I'm sure you guys do too, but make sure even when you're traveling, you, use, uh, you bring extra business cards. Because I went on a plane, I met someone, he was kind of reading a book, and obviously our connection was that we were both in Tallahassee, we're landing in Philadelphia, and I'm like, you know what, I had an okay conversation with this guy, let me just go to Baggage Claim and go back up to him. I, I patted him on the back and I said, hey, listen, I know we didn't talk much, but it's great to meet you, here's my card. What's your name? Greg. Greg, I said, hey Greg, here's my card, call me if you're back in Tallahassee. I said, sure, I'll call you. I never heard from that guy. Until a year later, I get this email. Dan from flight 222, Tampa to Philadelphia, or Tallahassee to Philadelphia. And I'm like, who writes a subject line like that, right? And what it was, was this gentleman had remembered that I worked for the St. Pete Times in Tallahassee. And he had, he's in, the, in public relations, and he had needed an issue with the Times. And I said, well, I remember you somewhat. I really didn't. But the guy found my card, reached out to me, and said, you want to get together for coffee? I said, sure. So I had coffee with him, and then at this point, I got his card. And because I didn't really know, him, know much about him, but I remember once we had coffee. Well, a year later, I'm graduating college, and I did my last semester at Florida State London. So when Chucker was talking about London earlier, I was reminiscing a little bit. But what happens when you graduate college? You, you have to look for jobs. And just like we are all here today, we have to reach out to everyone in our relatives. And we have to ask for favors, because if you don't ask, you don't get. So I found this guy's card, and I sent him an email, Akash, from flight 222 Tampa to Philadelphia, uh, looking for a job. He wrote back, when do you want to start? <laughs> My first job out of college, this is a true story, did not require a diploma. Did not, and this is, um, obviously I got a diploma, but didn't require a diploma, it didn't require my resume, it didn't require my references. It was because through networking. I graduated college and then I started in Tampa. That's how I got to Tampa. So my entire career, how I got to Tampa was because I gave a business card to a guy next to me on a plane who I didn't even think liked me. So that is my, that is my number one, I tell the students all the time, that, and you guys are business professionals, but always carry extras. Keep them in your car, keep them in your shoes. Um, seriously, you never know when you're gonna need it. So that, that's, the, that's the be proactive portion. Leverage your network is again staying in touch, adding value, and I'll go into the adding value when we do the follow-up, and then have a plan to follow up. <clears throat> so when I do, how many of you guys, now I just want to get a feedback, how many of you guys still handwrite notes when you meet someone at an event? And, sorry, what's your name, ma'am? Oh, sorry, Mike. Um, what, and tell me exactly how, you, how do you follow up when you write notes. Well, when I carry business cards, I do put in my shoes that I work with. Socks. Smart. I don't wear socks, so it's easy. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I have socks. Yeah, I'll make notes, I'll make tag notes of who I meet, and then I'll file them, but I have thousands of business cards of people who I've met through the years. So I've, got, I've traveled all over the world, so I've got contacts all over the world. And so what would you say the, the so you write a card, I get it in the mail, and then what happens? A person calls you? So if you, when you write a handwritten note, when you meet somebody, do you get, what kind of reaction do you get from them? What kind of reaction? Yeah, do they call you back or do they say? Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's always a, a communication back and forth because we broke the ice, you know, and there's a mutual interest of whatever our conversation was, so it'll take us to the next level. And, and how, many of, uh, uh, how many of you guys can relate to Mike? You guys still write handwritten notes? How about emails? How many people write emails the same day they meet somebody? What about, um, I mean, so, do, does that work too? Does it have anywhere? What is the best? Uh, cards, you, cards work better. You cards work better for you? They just send out cards. Contacts in there, and then they can tell you when you set the card, and then you can refer back to it, so you can put them in different places. But it's a handwritten card. Yes, sir. Uh, I bring cards home, and we go to LinkedIn and uh, try to connect up with them. And, uh, you know, uh, if I have time, I'll look at, at the uh, do a profile and see uh, what areas that you know, I can comment on that we have a common interest. What was your name, sir? Frank Lee. Frank. And how many people do what Frank does and add them on LinkedIn as soon as they meet somebody? That's great. That is a great, thank you all for sharing. I didn't get your name, ma'am. Yeah, Pam. Pam. And so thank you guys for sharing because that is exactly the right type of networking we need. We need to follow up right away, whether it be handwritten notes cards through LinkedIn or through emails. Uh, I'll give you my system just because a lot of people ask. I have Microsoft Excel. Most people have Microsoft Word or Excel. I use two different Excel sheets. One, I implement the cards just like everyone else does, and I write a blank email. So, for instance, your name is Greg? Yes. D 
Dear Brett, this is a formula, by the way. This is, everyone will get the same email. And, and I'm telling you that the reason why I do it is, it is that you get a better response rate. So it'll be Dear Brett, it was great meeting you at Thai Tampa Bay. So you insert the name, insert the location, and where do you work? Congratulations on your success at Office Extreme. If there's anything I can do to, to help you, please do not hesitate to ask. Have a great day. And I always mess with people and I put three exclamation points. And people always wonder why, but it just, it, it's different from other emails. Now what did I do there? Went in there, my response email. You, you offered to help them first. Exactly. Add value. That's one of the, 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 the A's in add value. So, I offer to add value, <clears throat> and then I take the Excel sheet, and I go back, and so Greg is a busy guy, he's a big CEO, and he didn't respond to me. And normally people respond because they're shocked that, they, that someone's offering to add value, plus I've emailed them first, and I've contacted them right away, and they're impressed that I know a little bit about them. So, in the Excel sheet, the second sheet I have is a touching base Excel. <clears throat> that has their name, their company, their title, the date I met them, where I met them, and, and what, um, and what, uh, maybe their phone number, maybe I'll put their phone number on there. So five things, right? The Excel sheet. It's the touching base. So because Greg didn't respond to me, people normally, what do you do when someone, when you meet someone and you email them, they don't respond back? Do you guys forget about them? Call. You call them? You can call them. What if they don't answer your call? Text them. Text them, you can text too. <laughs> but the problem is that when people like, I'm just using Greg as an example, are very busy in these certain situations. You get frustrated, right? You're like, I met this guy, we had a great conversation, we talked about cars, we talked about flights, we talked about the box. But the problem is, Greg didn't mean to not email me back. He just got too busy with life. So the second Excel sheet that I have is touching base. It's the context that I wanted to follow up with, and I did, but they didn't respond back to me. So they're in my touching base email. Two months go by, and I'm like, you know what? I haven't checked my touching base Excel sheet yet. I pull it up, and I look at it, and I say, okay, I'm going to email Greg again. The subject line is not great meeting you anymore. It's touching base. Dear Greg, it was great meeting you two months ago at Ticon Tampa Bay. This is two months from now. And what does Greg do? What do you do when you get the email? Yeah, you feel bad, right? You're like, oh man, well, I'm never really screwed up. This guy is so nice and we talked about kids. He comes back and calls me. And now, a contact that you thought, because he didn't respond right away, even though you offered that value, could become as as the gentleman just here said, a, a future relationship. And that's what, you know, I mentioned blah, right? Be proactive, leverage your network, add value, and have a plan to follow up. If you do all that, you will have some great connections and great relationships. I wanted to show an ABC Action new video, uh, News video, um, but we don't have, well, let's try it. Maybe this will work. And it's very similar to what I was just talking about. It was a reporter who wanted to know. All right, this should work. Let's hit play. Okay, so it looks like it's not available. We I wanted to show an ABC Action News video where I, where I told this to um, people and they found jobs from this, the system, but we can come back to it. That link is on the web, so we can find it. Um, so be proactive, leverage your network, add value, have a plan to follow up. Those are the blah, blah, blahs of networking. It's really simple. Now when you think of some person at your next event speaking about this, you know, blah, that's how you network. So our agenda, networking, mishaps, position yourself. What are some common mishaps you guys see networking? Anyone remember when you're walking around this event tonight or later on? Anyone throw out ideas? Somebody that you can't connect with. What, what do you mean, sir? Well, somebody you don't have a common interest with. You, you just bump into the wrong person. So you just say, nice to meet you, move on? Yeah. And Ashok, you had something to say? <laughs> so that's a great, that's a great point. How many people have trouble remembering people's names? And that's a, common, that's a common mishap in networking. So what I try to do is, I look at a fireplace. You guys, everyone has a fireplace or a senior fireplace? Well, a fireplace, obviously it's right here, 
and over it has a mantle, and there's normally three images or of something with your family or your kids or, or, or maybe a, a sporting event is on a mantle. So I try to remember three things about someone when I meet them. Some people can write it down on business cards, but it's hard to write when you're also networking. So the next time you meet them or in your emails, write down something or, or email back something that's about your situation. So for instance, I know that Shillin, I'm going to call on Shillin because I'm going to talk about him in the next video. Uh, Shillin works in a health access group. And I know he has a daughter that just turned one years old. So the next time I go up to Shillin at networking event, I just met him today, right? And I say, Shillin, what do you do? He goes, I work at, well, I'll just play. Shillin, what do you do? I work at health access group. And, 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 how, and how do you, um, and how, do you, how did you start health access group? Uh, I've been in healthcare my entire career, so I'm passionate about it. And are you involved in Tampa Bay? Yes, I'm a charter member. There you go. So I have three things now on Shillin's mantle. Thank you, Shillin. So the next time I see him, I'm going to say, hey, how's Thai Tampa Bay? Or how's entrepreneurship? Or I might send him an article about entrepreneurship. So those are the things that I try to, to, to recommend to students and to folks like you who are networking all the time. Try to remember three things about someone. Because those are that's a common mishap. And what if I go up to Greg and I say, hey, Shillin, how you doing? It's awkward, right? You're like, what are you doing, man? I just met you last month. And obviously, that, that could construe the relationship, and you might not want to do business with me because I can't remember your name. So thank you for bringing that up. Any other common mishaps we see in networking? Go ahead, ma'am. What's your name? Marianne. Marianne, nice, nice to meet you. Hey, so, um, how do you gracefully exit like, a conversation where there's not mutually not happening? The, the, that's a great question. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> that happens all the time. And the best part is, now that you know it, it's going to happen tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> so when you go to, well, I'll get to it. Um, so, so generally when you come to an event like this, you're with a group of friends. So I will literally, I have three interns right now that are with, with our company. And we'll drive them to an event, and I will tell them when you get to the event, do not talk to me. Go, go meet me afterwards at 7 o'clock when we're leaving the event. Go find new people. And when you're in conversation, when you are really feeling like it's not jiving, as the other gentleman said, politely excuse yourself, excuse me, I have to go speak to one other person, or I have to run. I would just say, I came with someone and they need me right now. Um, is there any situation that someone can give Marianne a better example? I have to go to the restroom. Go, go ahead, Howard. Go ahead. I was going to say the bathroom. It's hard to argue with. All right, hard to argue with the bathroom. Yes, sir. That's a good one, right? Uh, that is a very common example because the quality versus quantity of networking. I like to go, and, and you guys can, how many people go to a networking event and want to meet five quality connections? Five quality connections or 20, 25 business cards, 25 people. Is it quality versus quantity? Quality. Quality, right? So when you're having a conversation with someone and you realize that the quality is there, you, you have to keep it. Go ahead, sir. And how does that, how is that, can you give an example of how that's helped you, Frank? Uh, they said that they left, they left it, they write it down, and I've only gotten one card that the person wrote down a false address. Any other examples? Yeah. That's how you. That's how you leave. David, you had your hand up. That's a great. That's a great line. Any other mishaps we see in networking? Yeah, the video's on. Yeah. So good, Greg.
trying to find the video, so. Uh, well, I would like to share my network. Go ahead, go ahead, put on. I go to conferences all the time, and when I ask the guy who creates my batch, I ask him, can you write one line, one liner for me? So instead of my company name, I put a title, talk to me about outsourcing. Talk to me, how can I give you this product? So like we are in healthcare business. So I write here, talk to me about RCM. So that gives people immediate attention. Like one of the business I got, uh, we had some of the rates like, which is very far cheaper than the market industry rate. And I knew that people who are coming to that particular event, they are looking for that kind of service. So I wrote it, talk to me about medical billing in 3%. And people will see it and they will come. How can you do that? So, so this is, you know, it, sometimes you have to do little things, little outside the box. So Greg asked a question earlier about what, what if you go to the wrong events? And that's happened. How many of you have gone to an event, and you don't have to pretend this is it, but you've gone to an event <laughs> or a seminar <laughs> and, thought, and thought you were going to get thought you were going to see or meet somebody and you just realized it wasn't wrong, right? Has that happened to anybody? It's happened to all of us and it's going to continue to happen. It's not because your schedule or is messed up or something. It's just the, the paradigm shifts. But one thing the events are always have in common, especially conferences, I see Caitlin who just walked in, they always have sponsors. So the very worst thing I can do is go up to a sponsor because a sponsor has what? Money. money. So now everyone's going to go over to Caitlin after you have an event, you're going to money, right? So the sponsors are always the one either funding the event. You always also have to go up to the organizer. Those are two things that no matter what, whether the event is towards your business or not, I will, before I leave, and you have to exit gracefully, you will, I will go up to the, uh, to the sponsor and say thank you for sponsoring because, and maybe other sponsors in the room can, uh, can, uh, can attribute this, a lot of times the sponsors don't get thanked. And they're either funding the organization, they're putting their time and resources behind it, and they don't get thanked. And when you're starting up a company, those are the people that are really the, the ones that you need behind you to support you to go forward. Um, talks about having a follow plan, email, make sure the, I use the Excel system. We, we'll get the video to you guys. We talked about being proactive, leveraging your network, adding value, having a plan, mishaps, and now we're going to talk about positioning ourselves. So we overcoming mishaps, be aware where you are. Make sure you know everyone's on a level set playing field. Act on it, take a risk. And be humble. One thing I asked about to when I mentioned to Sheldon earlier is how did you get started in, in entrepreneurship? People like to hear themselves what? Talk. So when you're networking and you're, all, and you're meeting someone for the first time, I always ask them about a success. How did you get started in the business? How, how, how did you end up in Tampa? How did you end up um, you know, hiring 45 employees and selling? The guy that spoke this morning, Rob Wright, you sold, what did he say his first question was? How do I get my company to be like Google, to get Google to buy my company, right? So act humble, but make sure you're asking them about themselves. Things aren't always as they appear. Um, no one gets in on the first try, and since Sheldon's here, I can, uh, and the video isn't working, but, um, so when I moved to Tampa, I mentioned I moved to Tampa seven years ago. I worked at a small PR firm, and I was a little peon. I was 22 years old. I was literally trying to get involved in every organization I can and get a seat at the table, because when you're starting up and you're small, you want to get the seat at the big table. Well, there's a lunch group in Tampa that really was, was the who's who of Tampa Bay. It, it had everybody and it met on Fridays and they had their own secret website and I knew of the site because my boss, three layers above me, had gone to the luncheon. So I'm like, man, I really want to go to this luncheon. I set a goal for myself. We talked about goals earlier this morning. Set a goal for yourself. I want to go to this luncheon, but I want to be the youngest one because that was my goal. So I set a goal that, uh, that I'm going to get there. So I called the guy, the main organizer, who I knew invited my boss. And he said, no, you're not, you're not big enough. You can't do it. He told me I couldn't do it. So, and then that was, I think that was, uh, I'll speak of the same thing. So I called, so I think the next thing is about revenge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so this is it. I was playing the field, we started our own group. So I called a friend of mine, Shillin's one of them. I called two other friends, and I said, let's get together, and let's start our own group. So we, then I'll, I'll tell you the concept, because it's explained in the video, but I'll tell you the concept. The concept is, when you're networking at an event, you don't have enough time to know about Marianne's history, why she got to Tampa, or Greg's company, and what they do here. You really don't, because unless you follow up properly, you won't get that time to see how you can work together. So our concept was, let's just start a dialogue. So there was four young professionals, me, Shelley, and two others. 
and we just got everyone together for lunch the first Friday of the month. The concept was that each one of us four hosts had to invite a different person. So, and, and the rule is two of the other hosts are not allowed to know the person. So every lunch you're meeting at least two new people. And we, this was the concept that I wanted to get involved in the big one. And I didn't, it wasn't, I wasn't invited, I wasn't high enough on their poll. So where's Jared? Is Jared still here? Jared's over there from Moffitt. So Jared's been one of, one of our guests and, and that's exactly, exactly the kind of example. So generally these events, Jared who works at Moffitt is an attorney there, the CEO would be invited and not an attorney like Jared. So be, just because of the hierarchy of the company. So Jared was one of our guests. And every year, we have a reception that brings about all of our guests and bring, we have to bring the community together. But the point of it is, we've been doing this for a couple years and we got a lot of media attention. And I'll go into that in a second. But we got a lot of media attention for hosting this event. So we called ourselves the Leaders Friday Lunch. And what happens when you start something and everyone wants to be part of it, right? Exclusivity? Well, the same gentleman five years ago that told me that I couldn't be in that group called and said, we want you in. Of course, I said no, right? But that's about networking. What we did was, you know, everything we just talked about, we put it all together. So act on it, have a plan. We had a plan, include others. Networking, you can't do it by yourself. It has the word work in it. You have to work the contacts you have. Um, act for success, now for revenge. I say that because I really wanted to be successful networking and to be a community leader. I didn't act on the revenge. It just so happens that our group has done really well. Um, and let others join. When that guy, you know, I just jokingly, he of course has come before, but you know, that, that is exactly what I'm trying to, um, to leave for you guys. Accept, learn, laugh, change, or don't change. Um, you know, be, these are your overcoming my sense. Be aware, level set, act on it, humility. Everyone's been there when you have a bad presentation or you have a bad day. Just know that when you're trying to network, make sure you get something and you position yourself to, to be a leader. Um, and how many of you guys have uh, social media? And how many of you, these are some of the companies I work with, uh, how many of you guys use social media for, uh, for networking? Hopefully all of you. Who's on Twitter? How about uh, Facebook? What about uh, Pinterest? Someone want to explain what Pinterest is? I see a lot of hands up. You may have you raise your hand. Yes, what's your name? Andrea. Nice to meet you, Andrea. Um, Pinterest is uh, it's a lot of photos, it's a lot of images. Uh, you can assign word, well, unless you assign words to it, it's not going to be a very useful. Um, one of the biggest things I use Pinterest for is um, to graphically represent certain kinds of content and use that in, um, whether I'm using it in Facebook or whether I'm using it for, um, for print um, or offline marketing. Um, gosh, it's kind of hard to describe it, isn't it, until you actually see it. The point is, uh, four or five years ago, companies, big startups, they weren't really active in social media, especially Pinterest, and it's now blowing up. Facebook, Twitter, if, if you guys have companies and you're not on it, you need to get on it. For networking, I'll tell you, these are my social media statistics. They're not a lot, but there's probably a lot of you that more. Google Plus. Google Plus, yeah, I, I didn't put Google Plus on that. I might have on this one. It's on a different one. But LinkedIn, as we mentioned earlier, um, when I meet somebody, and we talked about the follow-up part earlier, I get their business card, I first go to their Facebook business page, I like their page, I find, their follow I find them on Google Plus, LinkedIn, and Pinterest. And these are these are just the numbers that I have and and remember social media everyone can see it. So this is the way I set up my platform. I can't really see from here. Um, so you see that you see that the top right hand corner is my personal t t Twitter page. The left is my LinkedIn page is personal. My Facebook personal page is what I like. I like the water in Tampa Bay. A lot of you guys do. But you can't really make that your business. So if you look at the bottom right we took the graphic of what I appreciate about Tampa and, and we made it unique. We enhanced it. On the left hand page, when everyone has, who has a company Twitter page? A business Twitter page? And who haven't I called on yet? Who, who, I don't know. Tell me about your company Twitter page. We want to know about it. 
What does it look like? Does it look good? No, no, I'm serious. What kind of messages are you sending out? Who's following you? So, do you have like a cover like le left of my elevate? And and what kind of um, what kind of return on networking? I mean, how do you relate this networking? So, let's start something. Uh, this is power. As long as you do the keys and keys, you just do it and blast up stuff one way, it's not going to take more than one time. It's a lot of keys and keys. Can everyone hear what he said? No, no. no. Yeah, no. You've got, you've got to listen. Like, like when you're going out, you listen throughout the day and everyone else's presentation. You've got to listen to the chatter and the way you know, filter it to the people that are used to. You've got to listen to those that you want to engage with and engage with them. You've got to be part of it. Same thing in the network. Exactly. Same thing with networking. With Anand was saying, Anand is a real, real estate agent in Tampa, and he said he had a business page, very similar to mine, but you have to be engaging. So if you're going to a networking event, right, here's what I do. Even though people don't know that I'm going to a networking event, I know I'm going to a networking event, I let the people know that on my social media that I'm going to a networking event. The worst that can happen is that other people know about it. Is Michael still here? There was a mic. Uh, I posted last night that I was coming here. There was a few people that found out about this through, through social media. So what you're doing when you're meeting someone, so today, I'll go home and I met Mary, Mary Ellen today. Mary. Mary and Mary Ann today, and I'm gonna find her Twitter page, and I'm gonna say great meeting you on social media. So when you're, when you're in the technology space, social media is good for networking, because here's the deal. It takes me 13 times for me to meet, I, I met Greg today, but it's gonna take me 13 times that I have to interact with him for me to get to trust him, for me to do business together. What's happening with social media is now a LinkedIn, a Facebook like, a Twitter post, that's cutting into those 13 times. So now, before we're in the old days, we have to meet him 13 times and have lunch and coffee and dinner, that's cut down. The social media adds credibility to you. Even though people think and people thought it wouldn't go anywhere, now, because I've added him on Facebook, I've added him on LinkedIn, I've added him on Twitter, I only really need, with, need to meet with him about four or five times. The email counts too. That email response and the handwritten note we were just talking about, that counts too. And when we're networking and we're in startup mode, we have to get there fast. Uh, these are some of the affiliations. So I, I brought that up because of all the organizations that you're involved in. How many of you guys are involved in a professional association or a community related organization? And if you and how many of you guys that raise your hand are involved in, are on social media? Each one of you that raise your hand should be following your organization. So for instance, I'm involved in the University of Tampa. I'm gonna be giving credit to the University of Tampa. I'm gonna be retweeting their messages and promoting some things that they're doing because I'm personally involved. What that will do is someone on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter will see that and want to reach out to me for business because of that credibility. Um, have determination, don't give up. Ask for assistance, um, I'm available. Kunal's available, Shilin, uh, anyone who spoke today is available. Take a chance. I, I want to leave you with this determination thought because, sorry, you had a comment, sir? Uh, one other thing is very powerful, are LinkedIn groups. Mm -hmm. I actually got published mm -hmm. because of some comment that I made and something I want to expand it to uh, uh, you know, an online newspaper. And uh, uh, the comments that people make, you see that you have interest in common and uh, you get another uh, person to hook up with uh, through that. And I've got people who come to my uh, education committee of the Sentinel Technology Forum, and they're they're helping build, uh, you know, good good uh, education for the students so they can be qualified for the workplace. Uh, they can do it. Did business come from your from your published paper? Uh, that did, uh, no, that didn't. Uh, that was more. But it will. I'm sorry. There, one more comment in the back, and then I know could almost wrap up. Sorry, we can't hear you. Sorry, your name? My name is Mike. Mike? Uh, it sounded like what this gentleman was saying in regards to LinkedIn groups. Um, I actually have a group that I have created where I have probably 36 other members of this group, where I have, I get sent a conversation group and it's almost half as a moderator to you know, people who chime in the discussions, but you're trying to bring up things that are thought provoking, things that are maybe a little bit, uh, you know, you go either way and you almost you know, you create banter amongst all the different people that are getting involved, and then you're putting in your own um, two cents, you know, as well as being moderate, but it also allows people to see your expertise in your field. So that, now how many of you guys try LinkedIn groups? 
to the survey. I'm, I, I personally don't, but I'm going to definitely check it out. I'm part of some and uh, for networking. But earlier, I know we have to wrap up, but I really appreciate you guys being so attentive for the last hour and a half. I know you guys need a break. I need a break. Um, I mentioned earlier that the Leaders Friday Luncheon Group that we created, we created just to continue networking within the community to get a brand and to meet other people. So the cool part about it is media and social media plays into what I was talking about. So we, we, had, an, we had these cocktail receptions where we get a lot of community leaders to, to attend. And we got some media attention. So a newspaper columnist wrote a story about the four young folks that started it. Why we started it, because as I mentioned earlier, it was because we really weren't allowed at the big, big kids table. When we, when we started it, when we started it, we didn't know where it was going to go. Well, what had happened was we, we started it, we had the cocktail reception, and we were asked to be on the radio. So I went on the radio, on a local radio station here, to talk about the concept. And uh, someone from New York, a Fox News producer, heard the, uh, the, the interview. It was just a little session about networking on a local radio station here, around 9.70 a.m., for those of you who listen to the news talk. Um, at the RNC convention, the producer happened to be in town and said, we'd love for you to have to go on Fox News and talk about the experience. So from my little group that I started, 2.8 million people saw me on Fox and Friends talking about the same group, which I did because of network. So my closing thought to you is position yourself, make sure you're using the blah, blah, blah in every part of your lifestyle, stay active on social media, and have determination. Because my goal was, when I started to network, was to be the best in the business. And I came here because of networking, and I'm happy to help you in any way I can. I want to thank you guys for your time, and if I can ever assist here, I appreciate the opportunity.